value in terms of its macroeconomic statistics is rolling along just about okay. It, it, we got through the global financial crisis better than most other nations as a result of Kevin Rudd's use of the budget to increase expenditure at a very time when the economy needed an injection of, of spending to prevent us slipping into recession. Rudd's budget did the trick. But ever since then, uh, we've been running budgetary deficits, um, you may recall the Abbott government came to office not just promising to uh, stop the boats, but also to end the debt and deficit crisis that was looming in Australia, partly a result of Labour's profligate spending during the global financial crisis, not to mention its reckless commitments uh, to uh, a national disability insurance scheme and uh, a reasonably funded education system. Oh dear. But what are we in now? We're in a steady-as-she-goes economic state, but we have a much bigger budgetary deficit and a much bigger national debt than uh, was the case when the Abbott and Turnbull governments came, came to, to office. Indeed, the uh, size of the budget deficit is larger, the, the public debt is about twice as large uh, as it was then. So though the economy is sort of bumping along, uh, the debt and deficit problem, if anything, has got worse. And that's, of course, why the government stopped talking about it. Uh, there was no reference to any debt or deficit crisis. Indeed, uh, what we were presented with was a remarkably rosy scenario. Now, I love that phrase, rosy scenario. Ross Gittins, writing in the Sydney Morning Herald yesterday, picked up on that uh, because he thought rosy scenario must be some... Uh, uh, little known Italian economist. Rossi uh, scenario, si è vero. Yes, Ross, uh, we, we have a rosy scenario. Indeed, something wonderful has happened just in the last four or five months since the mid year uh, financial report was produced just before Christmas. It seems that all the estimates are now that we've got a great flood of revenue coming into the coffers of the federal government, quite unexpectedly. And indeed, so the government is in a position to give that back to the people who earned it. Now, I might say as an aside, this is another thing that makes me squirm whenever I see it. Oh, no, I said I wouldn't refer to ScoMo in scurrilous terms again, but here we go. Give it back, as ScoMo says, it's the people's money. We're, not, we're just not taking it from them, it's theirs. Now, I'd have to say, um, perhaps I'm a little uh, biased in this regard, because I've always been a public servant. My income comes out of uh, revenues raised uh, by the University of Sydney, um, partly from government funding, but also from student fees, and corporate sponsorship, and other ways in which universities raise their revenues these days. But I always thought my wage wasn't purely mine in that sense, that there's a social element in all of our earnings. I get to work on, on a train, or if I drive on a public road, uh, I'm the beneficiary of access to health services, uh, kids can go to uh, school with, without uh, direct payment. In other words, there's a whole set of public expenditures that make my life possible uh, and, and my work possible. And it's not unreasonable, therefore, to think that what I get paid is in part a return to the, all those public and social processes that go towards creating that income. So I, the, the notion that somehow it's all mine, 
and I'm not going to let the government have any of it. Well, I mean, logically, you then have to say, well, the other side of the coin should be governments that say, uh, uh, well, you ain't going to get it. You know, you're not going to get it in public transport. You're not going to get it in schools. You're not going to get it in all So this actually takes me to the punchline of my introductory remarks, which I'll save you for about 10 minutes, but I might hurry to it. But to the extent that there's any vision in this budget, it's one, frankly, that I find totally abhorrent. It is of a society in which we have lower rates of taxation, lower provision of public goods, a more selfish society in which the public realm is hollowed out. And make no mistake about it, the long-term tax plan that was delivered by the Federal Treasurer in that speech on uh, Tuesday night uh, was one where we're moving essentially towards a flat tax rather than a progressive tax for Australia. Now this is a major change in, in policy stance. It's couched in terms of people getting their money back because it's theirs, but what it really means is that inequality will worsen and the public sphere will be, uh, if not decimated, at least lowered in the standard of provision. That, is that the sort of Australia you want? It's not mine. So to conclude my remarks, as I would say to my students, whenever you hear a treasurer present a budget, uh, ask yourself these questions. Is it appropriate for the macroeconomic circumstances? In other words, is it a good way of ensuring that there'll be uh, jobs and incomes uh, for, for the people? Is it good for funding what we need as a society in terms of infrastructure, public services? Is it good for creating a fair society, one that is equitable and has uh, taxation structured according to people's ability to pay? How does it contribute to a sustainable, and in particular an ecologically sustainable future, if at all? And what vision does it embody for the future of that society? Those, it seems to me, are the key questions about the Australian budget. And I rate this one as about the worst I've ever seen in those terms. It is irresponsible in relation to macroeconomic management in just the same way that Treasurer Peter Costello was irresponsible when he was John Howard's treasurer during that period when there literally was a river of gold flying to Canberra, largely as a result of the, the mineral boom. What did Costello did? He reduced taxes, he cut uh, all taxes off income from superannuation. The major beneficiaries of his tax cuts were largely wealthy people. I was a beneficiary because I'm, I'm an above average income earner. I did quite well out of the, at the Costello era, but it was not what Australia needs. It was uh, frankly uh, irresponsible. And as a measure of how bad this budget is, uh, in, that, in terms of that criteria, Costello himself has now come out criticising ScoMo for being irresponsible. Talk about pots calling kettles black. Uh, I'm starting to froth at the mouth, so, <laughs> so, so I think I'll, I'll call it quits at this point. But I, I, I might say, just before I do sit down, that I, I'm currently writing a book about economic inequality, not specifically in Australia this time, I've done that before, but looking at global economic inequality trends. And it seems to me, if that is the prism through which you look at this budget, it is absolutely horrifying. We're experiencing growing economic inequalities. This would make the situation a lot worse. There's been some very interesting analysis in the newspapers of that very point over the last couple of days from uh, that, that Canberra econometrician to which I earlier referred, but also coming out of the Australia Institute uh, 
uh, and the Centre for Future Work where Troy Henderson works. So this is my segue into introducing Troy, who's going to speak from, from the table here. But as I said in my remarks a little earlier, do come in, find yourself a seat. We're just moving on to the second speaker. Uh, and I might say just one final word when introducing Troy. He is from the Centre for Future Work, and he's done something earlier this week that I've never done. In fact, he's probably done quite a lot of things that I've never done. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something uh, that's in my mind, is he attended the dreaded budget lockup in Canberra, <laughs> along with all those other journalists and so on, to get the, the inside statistics, all the analysis, before it was released to the general public. So I'd like to you know, welcome Troy, uh, and I, I, together with you, look forward to his remarks as a view from an insider's perspective. <laughs>